Sizism or size discrimination is prejudice or discrimination on the grounds of a person's size. Size discrimination usually refers to extremes in physical size, such as very tall or short, extremely thin or fat. Topic. Discrimination This type of discrimination can take a number of forms, ranging from refusing to hire someone because they are considered to be too short or too tall, to treating overweight and underweight individuals with disdain. There aren't currently any specific anti-discrimination laws that have been put in place to prohibit sizism, despite the issue being extremely prevalent. Sizist stereotypes such as, overweight people are lazy, or tall people can play basketball are often ingrained in modern society. In the U.S., the list of anti-discrimination acts does not specifically include sizism as an offense, despite substantial research documenting weight discrimination and its negative impact on the lives of those targeted. Under the U.S. Constitution and federal law, it is legal to discriminate on the basis of weight. With the exception of the state of Michigan and several localities i.e., San Francisco and Santa Cruz in California, Washington, D.C., Urbana, Illinois, Binghamton, New York, and Madison, Wisconsin that have passed legislation explicitly prohibiting weight-based discrimination, Americans have no viable means for seeking legal recourse in the face of weight discrimination, and existing U.S. civil rights laws prohibit discrimination only on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, and national origin. Some individuals have attempted to file discrimination lawsuits under the Americans with Disabilities Act but plaintiffs must prove that their weight is a disability or perceived to be a disability according to ADA definitions, which is not the case for many people. Thus, few cases have been successful under this law and most of these successes have occurred since 2009, after Congress passed the ADA Amendments Act, which expanded the definitions of disability to include severe obesity but not moderate obesity, overweight or underweight as an impairment. For example, in 2012, the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission EEOC successfully settled two cases for employees who were terminated from their jobs because their employers regarded them to be disabled based on their obesity and their severe obesity was now a covered disability under the new amendment. Despite these few recent successes, not all weight discrimination occurs in the context of disability or perceived disability, and legal remedies that can directly address weight discrimination as a legitimate social injustice remain absent. The EOCC website states, Height and weight requirements tend to disproportionately limit the employment opportunities of some protected groups, and unless the employer can demonstrate how the need is related to the job, it may be viewed as illegal under federal law. A number of states and localities have laws specifically prohibiting discrimination on the basis of height and weight unless based on actual job requirements. Therefore, unless job-related, inquiries about height and weight should be avoided. Therefore size discrimination in the workplace is only illegal under federal law if it is not a job requirement. Topic. Characteristics. Sizism can be based on height, weight or both, and so is often related to height and weight based discrimination but is not synonymous with either. Depending on where in the world one is and how one lives his, her life, people may have a tendency to be especially tall, slender, short, or plump, and many societies have internalized attitudes about size. Another manifestation of body variance is muscle mass and skeletal size, often with associations of degree of compliance to one's born sex, but do not necessarily affect gender to deviate from sex. As a general rule, sizist attitudes imply that someone believes that his or her size is superior to that of other people and treat people of other sizes negatively. Examples of sizist discrimination might include a person being fired from a job for being overweight or exceptionally short though their work was unaffected. Sizism often takes the form of a number of stereotypes about people of particular heights and weights. Sizist attitudes can also take the form of expressions of physical disgust when confronted with people of differing sizes and can even manifest into specific phobias such as cacomorphobia the fear of fat people, or a fear of tall or short people. Sizism, being a newly recognized discriminatory stance, is usually observed by those who are its targets. Sizism is aligned with the social construction of the ideal or normal body shape and size and how that shapes our environment. In the U.S. we can observe many public facilities shaped by this normative 
Body including, telephone booths, drinking fountains, bleachers, bathroom outlets, sinks, toilets, stalls, chairs, tables, turnstiles, elevators, staircases, vending machines, doorways, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 to name a few. Design assumptions are drawn about the size and shape of the users height, weight, proportionate length of arms and legs, width of hips and shoulders. Body shaming, more specifically weight shaming of men and women, is a widely known characteristic of sizeism, shown in the form of prejudice and discrimination can include both skinny shaming and fat shaming. Topic. Prevalence Based on data analysis done on a survey of over 3,000 Americans, weight and height discrimination, a form of sizeism, was ranked just behind gender, age, and race biology as a highly experienced factor of discrimination. Among female respondents, weight and height discrimination exceeds race-based discrimination as the third most prevalent form of experienced discrimination. This discrimination was experienced in multiple settings, including from employers, interactions within the health care field, in educational atmospheres, as well as within personal and familial relationships. Greater prevalence was found to exist within those respondents who were self-reported as female, with 10% of female respondents reporting having experienced weight and height discrimination, compared to 5% of male respondents. For younger women, these numbers illustrated still an increase, 14.1% of women with a reported age range of 35 to 44 years old expressed experiencing weight and height-based discrimination, and women who identified between 45 to 54 years of age were nearly five times more likely to have experienced weight and height-based discrimination than their 65 to 74-year-old counterparts. The study also found that African American women were more likely to experience weight and height discrimination, with 23.9% of respondents having reported an incident. The women most affected are those who identify as belonging to the highest weight category. Those women reported as moderately obese, or those with a body mass index of 30 to 35, were found to be three times more likely than their male counterparts of a similar weight to experience weight based discrimination. Topic. Countermeasures Along with the countermeasures taken through legislation, there has been an increase in the number of measures taken by social media users in their efforts to combat sizeism. Many users have utilized popular hashtags on Twitter and Instagram to spread their message, such hashtags include hashtag sizest, hashtag sizeismsucks, hashtag allbodies, hashtag bodyposy, hashtag bodypositive and hashtag bodypositivity. Currently Instagram has 5.7 million posts containing the hashtag bodypositive, as well as this many celebrities have spoken out against about body shaming and the fashion industry including Lauren Conrad, Melissa McCarthy, Demi Lovato, Sam Smith, Dasha Polanco, Rob Kardashian, Leslie Jones, Kylie Jenner, Kate Winslet and more. Sizeism has also become a feminist issue and is part of the feminist movement, which includes sizeism activists. Topic. See also Anti-fat bias Height discrimination Short people Topic. Notes Topic. References Yofi Tarash, The Right to be Fat, Yale Journal of Health Policy, Law, and Ethics, 264-335 2012